Hi everyone, today I want to talk to you about why nystagmus in and of itself is evidence of impairment and not just an indicator of being above a certain blood alcohol level. We know based on the San Diego validation study that horizontal gaze nystagmus is 88% accurate at detecting a blood alcohol level over an 08, which is the per se limit in most states. But this doesn't fully describe what is happening when we see nystagmus. It's important to know that nystagmus mimics a saccade, which we will get into in a second. We know that nystagmus is an involuntary jerking of the eyes and that horizontal gaze nystagmus is nystagmus that occurs when we gaze to the side. We also know that when we introduce alcohol and certain drugs into our body, that we cannot control that nystagmus and that jerking motion in our eyes. We will come back to that in a moment. So what is a saccade? A saccade is a rapid eye movement which is mimicked by drug and alcohol induced nystagmus. Our eyes make saccadic movements when we quickly look from object to object when we look around. This is totally normal. During these saccades though, our, ver our vision blurs and loses information in the process. This is called saccadic suppression. The suppression of the blurred image occurs so that we do not notice the blur and that the brain can put together a complete and clear picture, or so we think. Experiments have shown that when a picture is changed during saccadic eye movement, the subject will likely not pick up on the change in the picture. So how does this relate to nystagmus? When nystagmus occurs, we lose pieces of information, except now it's occurring constantly when we gaze to the side and eliminates our ability to maintain visual focus. This is what makes nystagmus different from a saccade, which we can stop when wanted. This information is similar to having the wrong shutter speed on a camera. As we can see in the first example, it's pretty easy to see the six moving back and forth as I move the paper. But now we slow the shutter speed down to mimic gaps in information. The six becomes almost impossible to read while, while it's moving. So let's apply what we've talked about to operating a vehicle. We can do this by comparing eye movements while operating a vehicle to our horizontal gaze nystagmus test. Clue number one in this test is a lack of smooth pursuit. This is similar to the moving six example. While driving down the road, we have the ability to focus and track objects. This is a requirement to drive a vehicle. Whether they be cars or pedestrians entering the crosswalk, we need to be able to see these things. When our eyes are impaired by drugs or alcohol, we lose that ability to track the moving object as smoothly, causing a rapid eye movement to catch up. During that rapid eye movement, we lose pieces of information. Now let's look at the distinct and sustained nystagmus at maximum deviation. If we were to look at the passenger side mirror of a vehicle or out of that window with just our eyes, we again lose information as our eyes involuntarily jerk. We lose information such as approaching vehicles, curbs, pedestrians on the sidewalk, or bicyclists in the bike lane. This same concept applies as our alcohol concentration increases and we begin to exhibit onset of nystagmus prior to 45 degrees. Now our field of view without involuntary jerking decreases. Now those areas where we lose information include our rearview mirror, our driver's side mirror, and all the information that's out of our front windshield. As you can see, the effects of drugs and alcohol on the eyes alone are evidence of serious impairment when it comes to our ability to operate a motor vehicle safely. Vision is one of the primary functions required to drive. This is why people with naturally occurring nystagmus are rare to find in the driving population. What's worse with recent onset nystagmus caused by drugs and alcohol is that individuals are not used to functioning daily with that level of visual impairment and are probably unaware that it's even occurring. If you're interested in more information like this, please leave a comment on what you would like to see next. Also, I encourage you to look for Dr. Carl Siddick's class on the visual system. It's a great class and it discusses this and other topics like it in great detail. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. I would greatly appreciate it and really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.